Hello everyone, I am Srimanta Bhattacharya and I am going to present our work titled Ruby Rakov Backwards with More Users and More Security. This is a joint work with Mridul Nandi. This talk is broadly divided into three parts. I will start by motivating PRFs and their multi-user security. Then I will cover some technical background and state our results. And finally, I will give a brief sketch of the proof of one of our main results. Primary motivation of our work comes from the importance of pseudorandom functions. They are quite important cryptographic primitives and uh, are used for quite a lot of cryptographic tasks. Now, a pertinent question is how do we get them? How do we get good PRFs? In the domain of symmetric cryptography, it is uh, known that there are good block ciphers. Uh, there are good block cipher constructions which are modeled as pseudorandom permutations. Now, can we use them as PRFs? Can we use uh, a PRP as a PRF? It is known that an n bit PRF can be distinguished from an n bit PRP with order up to, to the n over 2 queries. And this is known as birth bound. Now, is it possible to go beyond this birth barrier? That is, is it possible? Uh, to use PRPs to come up with a construction uh, that requires a large number of queries, ideally order of 2 to the n many queries to distinguish it from a pseudo random function. This question is uh, practically important and theoretically challenging and uh, it was uh, treated for the first time formally by Bellare and others and uh, they termed this problem Luby Rakov backwards. Uh, because Luby and Rakoff in their seminal work considered the converse problem. They considered the problem of converting PRFs into PRPs. Sum of permutations is a well-known construction in the literature which converts a PRP into a PRF. To describe the construction, let RP be a random permutation on 0, 1 to the n. Now, the basic version of the construction denoted by XRP, it takes a uh, it takes an input of uh, length n minus 1 and it maps it to two distinct uh, inputs uh, to the random permutation and where is the random permutation rp at those two inputs and takes the sum of the corresponding outputs. So, so xrp is a mapping from 0 1 to the n minus 1 to 0 1 to the n. A series of works led to this result that XRP is secure up to order of 2 to the n many queries. That is, at least order of 2 to the n many queries uh, is required to distinguish XRP from a pseudo random function. Now, this simple construction can be generalized uh, various in various ways. Uh, XRP3 uh, in this construction, this random permutation is queried at three distinct points and uh, uh, the output is the sum of the corresponding outputs. So, XRP3 is a mapping from 0, 1 to the n minus 2 to 0, 1 to the n and uh, there is there are few works that implies that uh, XRP3x is secure up to order of 2 to the n many queries. Also be generalized into an efficient version uh, denoted by XRP-3. Uh, which uh, requires 5 calls to the random permutation uh, to produce 2n bit output. So, it is efficient because it requires one less block cipher call for 2n bit output. Now, uh, there is a uh, series of works that, uh, that shows that this construction is also secure up to order of 2 to the n many queries. Now, in general, one can think of uh, XRP k and XRP dash k for arbitrary value of k. In fact, some of the results that we have cited earlier uh, were derived for general value of k. But uh, in this work, our focus will be for the case k equal to 3 and this uh, sum of permutations co construction uh, has been practically used in C and C P Mac plus and Z Mac. Now, this uh, results look satisfactory because uh, in each case uh, um, uh, the construction is secure up to order of 2 to the n many queries. However, uh, 
when when the construction is used in a multi user scenario where each user has an independent copy of the construction and the adversary can uh, query the users uh, possibly adaptively so if there are u users and uh, the adversary can make qmax many queries per users uh, then by a standard hybrid reduction uh, it can be argued uh, that uh, XRPK is secure when the number of users is of the order of 2 to the n over 2 and the number of queries per user is also of the same order. Now, uh, for the specific case of AES which is uh, which has block length 128 bit, uh, it can be argued that it is secure when the product u into q max is of the order 2 to the 96. Uh, assuming uh, that the advantage is of the order 1 over 2 to the 32. Now, with the rapid growth of internet and other relevant technologies, this margin looks pretty vulnerable. So, a possible fix that comes to mind is uh, uh, increasing the block length of the cipher, but block ciphers like AES which, are, which is widely available, uh, it comes with a fixed block length. So, we cannot increase the block length of the cipher. So in such a state, one of our results implies that XRP3 is secure even when the number of users is of the order 2 to the n and uh, Qmax is also of the same order. Now, this is a substantial improvement over the order of 2 to the n over 2 bound uh, that we have discussed uh, previously. Uh, in the single user setting, this result implies that uh, the adversary's advantage is uh, negligible even after making order of 2 to the n many queries and to the best of our knowledge, this result is, is novel in the literature. What we have also shown is that the efficient version XRP-3 uh, provides same level of security. So, to discuss uh, or to uh, state our results in more precise terms, we require some technical background. And we start with the uh, notion of indistinguishability in the single user setting. So, to describe this notion, uh, let uh, func n be the set of all functions from 0 1 to the n minus 2 to 0 1 to the n and parm n be the set of all permutations from 0 1 to the n to 0 1 to the n. So, uh, we will uh, restrict uh, uh, our discussion to the construction XRP3. So, in the security game, the adversary uh, interacts either with the construction XRP3 uh, when it is constructed using the random permutation RP or it uh, interacts with the random function drawn from the set function. When the adversary queries with an x in uh, 0 1 to the n minus 2, in the real world it uh, uh, receives the output of the construction xrp3 and in the ideal world it gets a, a random uh, element of 0 1 to the n. And at the end of the entire interaction it outputs a single bit. So, we quantify the security of the construction uh, by the advantage of the adversary, which is the absolute difference uh, between the probabilities uh, that the adversary outputs 1 when it is interacting with the construction and uh, uh, the probability that it outputs 1 uh, when it is interacting with the random function. The probabilities are taken over the randomness in the real and the ideal world and any randomness used by the adversary. Now, since our focus is on the information theoretic security, we assume that uh, the adversary is computationally unbounded. So, uh, without loss of generality, we can assume that it runs with the best coins. Uh, so, we assume that it is deterministic. The only restriction we place on the adversary is that we restrict it to making q many queries. And uh, uh, so, without loss of generality, we assume that it does not repeat any query. 
because it, when it, re it repeats a query, it will get back the same reply. So under these conditions, uh, when the, when the transcript in the real world is given uh, by uh, this tuple p1 to pq, and that in the ideal world is given by the tuple uh, r1 to rq, which follows the distributions p uh, PRP and PRR, then uh, the adversary's advantage can be shown to be upper bounded uh, by the statistical distance between the these two distributions. Multi user indistinguishability. So, for this, uh, uh, let uh, func un be the set of all functions from uh, box u cross uh, 0 1 to the n minus 2 to 0 1 to the n and R f is a uh, uh, randomly chosen member of from this set and also R p 1 to R p u uh, are drawn uniformly at random uh, from the set par min. So, par min is a set of all permutations over 0 1 to the n and R p 1 to R p u are independently drawn. So, in the security game, uh, in the real world, uh, we have uh, this construction x or p 3 u, this is this is uh, this is uh, x or p 3 in the multi user setting, where there, there are there are you many users. And uh, in the ideal world, uh, we have this uh, random function drawn from the set func u n. When the adversary makes a query i x in the real world, it re receives the output of uh, x or p 3 when the underlying random permutation is r p i and uh, in the in the ideal world it uh, receives a random element of 0 1 to the n and in the end of the entire interaction it outputs a bit. So, like in the single user setting uh, we quantify the uh, security of the construction uh, by adversary's advantage, which is the absolute difference between the probabilities uh, when the adversary is interacting with uh, the construction and uh, when it is interacting with the random function. And uh, similar to the single user setting, the probabilities are taken uh, uh, over the randomness in the real and ideal world as well as any randomness used by the adversary. So, here in this uh, multi user setting, we allow A to make q max uh, many queries to each user. Uh, so, so, our assumption was that A makes at most q max many queries to each user. Now, we are allowing it to make exactly q max many queries to each user. So, we are giving more advantage to the adversary. and uh, all it will do is that uh, the bound we will get will be will be worst case bound. So, uh, now the total number of queries is given by q max into u. We also assume that A's queries to the same user are distinct because it if it repeats the query it will get back the same reply. And we also assume uh, that each user holds an independent copy of the random permutation. Uh, so reply uh, reply given by the e given by each user will be independent. So under these conditions, if uh, the real world transcript is given by p1 to pq and the ideal world transcript is given by r1 to rq, uh, then uh, the multi user advantage multi-user PRF advantage of the adversary can be shown to be upper bounded by the statistical distance between the these two distributions PRP and PRR. Now, we state our main results formally. So, our first result is uh, uh, multi user PRF advantage of the construction x or p 3, it upper bounds the advantage by this quantity, uh, which is 20 into square root of u into q max over 2 to the n, when q max is upper bounded by 2 to the n over 12. 
So, what this result implies is that uh, XORP3 can be used simultaneously and independently by order of 2 to the n many users when the adversary is allowed to make order of 2 to the n many queries per user. In the single user setting, uh, when we plug in uh, the value u, u equal to 1, it shows that the adversary's advantage is uh, of the order 1 over 2 to the n over 2 even after making order of 2 to the n many queries. Our second result is the single user PRF advantage of this efficient version XRP-3 and it is upper bounded by this quantity. We have not uh, given multi user analysis of this construction, but it can be done in a manner similar to this one and uh, uh, we would get similar type of bound as that of uh, this construction XRP-3. Now, to compare our first result uh, with the one obtained by Wang and Shen recently for the construction XRP2, uh, in their case the multi-user PRF advantage is uh, upper bounded by a quantity which is of the order square root of n into q over 2 to the n, here q is the total number of queries made by the adversary. So, uh, so our result is a substantial improvement over this one. Also, for this efficient uh, uh, version, uh, the one obtained by Kogliati for uh, XRP-2, in that case, uh, the multi-user PRF advantage is upper bounded uh, by a quantity which is of the order Q over 2 to the n. So, in this case also, uh, we obtain uh, substantial improvement. So, our results justify the title of our work and we have applied our result uh, to counter mode encryption without going into technical details. Uh, I just state that uh, the multi user security of the construction, uh, I mean counter mode encryption uh, is similar to that of XRP3 when uh, uh, the encryption scheme is instantiated with a good block cipher and uh, this can be compared with uh, parity method encryption uh, proposed by Bellare and others uh, which achieves similar level of security, but requires additional randomness. The main technique that we have employed in our proofs is the chi-square method. It is a tool for bounding, bounding the statistical distance between two joint distributions. So, in order to describe it, uh, let uh, x to the q be this q tuple of random variables sampled as per this distribution and z to the q be this uh, q tuple of random variables uh, sampled as per this distribution. Both the tuples uh, takes, uh, take their values over this domain. Now, we can define this uh, conditional, uh, uh, conditional distributions. So, x i minus 1 is the uh, this x to the x to the i minus 1 is uh, the tuple x 1 to x i minus 1. So, these are fixed values. So, so we have we have these uh, conditional distributions, these two conditional distributions. Now, we can define their chi square distance and then uh, the chi square method states that uh, uh, the statistical distance between these two joint distributions is upper bounded by this uh, quantity. Now, this is the this is the expected chi square distance where the expectation is taken over uh, the random choice of x 1 to x i minus 1. So, here uh, this uh, x 1 small x 1 to small x i minus 1 these are fixed values. Now, we we uh, make them random and and uh, and uh, sample them as per this distribution. So, so, then we, we get this expected value of this chi square distance. Now, this method uh, was introduced in the cryptography literature by Dai and others in 2017 and since then it has been effectively used in quite a few uh, recent works and uh, in this work also we have found this method to be fairly effective in bounding uh, the, the uh, statistical distance between joint distributions. Now, I am going to discuss uh, the main steps of uh, the proof of our first result that is multi user PRF security of XRP3. 
So, as we discussed earlier, uh, the advantage of adversary uh, is uh, upper bounded by the statistical difference between these two distributions. So, the goal is to upper bound this statistical distance and there we want to apply the chi square method. It turns out uh, that there is a subtle issue around the adversary's choice of the user of the i query which we denote here by u i uh, adaptively. So, u i can potentially depend on all the previous replies and not only on the replies, uh, previous replies given by u i and that creates a problem for application of the chi square method. So, is there a way around this problem? A possible solution lies in reordering the transcripts. So, we tran so we reordered the transcript p to a transcript s and we reordered the transcript r to a transcript u. We do it in such a way that uh, the, the replies given by the same user are clubbed together. So, in the original transcripts p and r that might not have been the case, but in the in the reordered transcripts or the permuted transcripts, we ensure that this happens and that somehow uh, makes it possible for chi square method to be applied on this uh, transcript uh, transcripts s and u so how do how do we reorder the transcripts u and s can be thought of to be generated by these two random experiments now for transcript u uh, the q tuple is is sampled with replacement manner from the set g which is nothing but uh, this set uh, 0 1 to the n and for random experiment s what we do is that for each user uh, we sample 3 into q max many elements with in a without replacement manner uh, from the set uh, 0 1 to the n and then uh, we we uh, divide this 3 into q max many elements into q max many triples. Then finally, what we do is that for each l in q, we take these triples one by one and take their sum and generate the corresponding element of the q tuple. Now, it is not difficult to see that the transcripts R and U are the same. Both are Q tables sampled with replacement from the set 0 1 to the n. What we have achieved by reordering P to S is that we have created a transcript where the replies from the same user are grouped together. So, the first Q max replies belong to user 1 the second q max replies belong to user 2 and in this manner the entire transcript is built. Now, we make two important observations. First one is that the distribution of output is independent of input in both worlds that is uh, for the construction x or p 3 as well as for the random function and second one is that uh, the adversary makes uh, same number of queries to each user. Uh, in fact, the second one is an assumption that we have made uh, while defining the notion of multi-user security. So, what these two facts allows us uh, is uh, first uh, it makes it possible to reorder the transcripts. Secondly, now in, in uh, the transcript S, the user for the ith query denoted by ui is uniquely determined by the index i. So, u i equal to that unique j such that i equal to j minus 1 into q max plus k, where k is between 1 to q max. So, in particular, we have that this conditional probability is exactly equal to this conditional probability. So, if the user for the ith query is j, then probability s i given all the previous replies by all the users is exactly equal to the conditional probability uh, of s i uh, given the previous replies by user j only. Uh, 
this follows because uh, the random permutation sampled by user j for the construction x or p is uh, independent of uh, all the other random permutations uh, sampled by the other users. Now, this makes it possible to apply the chi-square method to uh, bound the statistical distance between uh, uh, the distributions uh, corresponding to uh, transcript s and transcript u. <coughs> Another important thing to notice is that uh, the statistical distance between the original distributions is exactly equal to the statistical distance between uh, uh, the distributions corresponding to the reordered transcripts. Uh, this is because reordering being a permutation preserves the statistical distance. So, now it is enough to upper bound the statistical distance uh, corresponding to the reordered transcripts. Uh, now, can we apply chi-square method uh, to uh, for, for these two distributions? Uh, here, we need to ensure that support of S is contained in support of U, that is, that is one of the conditions that has to be met in order to apply the chi-square method. How do we ensure that? We ensure that by extending the transcripts S and U to the transcripts X and Y respectively. So, here S and U becomes marginals of X and Y. How do we extend this? For each i in q, we make x i equal to this triple t i 1, t i 2, s i, where s i as we have uh, uh, made it uh, is exactly equal to t i 1 plus t i 2 plus t i 3 and y i equal to v i 1, v i 2, u. Now, due to this extension, uh, this collection of v i's corresponding to each user uh, behave like a W or sample. Uh, this V i for each user, this uh, collection of V i's kind of simulate uh, the collection of T i's. So, if you remember the random experiment for S, uh, these T i's are sampled without replacement uh, from the set 0, 1 to the n. Now, here it should be noted uh, that V i 3 is given by this expression. So, k takes uh, uh, the value from the set 1 to 3 and v i 3 is given by v i 1 plus v i 2 plus u i. Now, the question is what are v i 1 and v i 2? We have not defined them so far. In order to see what v i 1, v i 2 are, let i be given by this expression. So, i th query is the jth user's kth query. Uh, so, the user for the i th query is j and uh, we consider the set of all tuples v 1, v 2 uh, such that v 1, v 2 and u i plus v 1 plus v 2 belong to this set. So, g is, is g is the set 0, 1 to the n and we are discarding all the v i's uh, that belong to the jth user. So, uh, so far, so far uh, 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 for jth users, uh, there has been k minus 1 queries uh, because this query is uh, jth users kth query. So, these v i's correspond, correspond to uh, uh, those k minus 1 queries. So, we are discarding those v i's and we also require that u i plus v 1 plus v 2 and v 1 and v 2 they, they, they remain distinct. Now, v i 1, v i 2 is sampled from this set. So, after extension, uh, it can be shown that support of x is exactly equal to support of y. So, that makes uh, it possible to apply the chi-square method uh, to bound uh, the statistical distance between these two distributions. And also, since S and U are marginals of X and Y, then we have this relation, uh, the statistical distance between uh, the distribution corresponding to these two transcripts S and U is uh, upper bounded by uh, the statistical distance between the distributions corresponding to the extended uh, transcripts X and Y. And then, we are now we are in a position to apply the chi-square method. Uh, to bound uh, this statistical distance. Now, we come to calculating these conditional probabilities under the distributions p r x and p r y. Uh, 
so here xi is this triple. Uh, so this part is slightly technical, but what I want to highlight is that uh, uh, this conditional probability, which uh, which is conditioned on the entire previous history uh, and takes into account the replies from all the users, uh, can be reduced to this conditional probability, where the history is limited to only the jth user. Now this is possible uh, due to reordering. Uh, and we have discussed uh, this reduction while, uh, while, while, while we discussed the reordering of the transcripts. Now, due to this, uh, uh, due to this reduction, it is possible uh, to calculate uh, this conditional probability, uh, and uh, which is given by this expression. This three under bar uh, uh, stands for falling factorial. Similarly, we can calculate this conditional probability under this distribution uh, and it turns out to be uh, this quantity. Here this set is the same uh, set eta i that we have uh, discussed in the previous slide. After the conditional probabilities or the distributions have been calculated, uh, then we can uh, calculate the chi square distance between, uh, between the uh, two conditional distributions and this turns out to be this uh, expression where c and d are given by these two uh, uh, expressions and uh, then uh, we calculate uh, the expected uh, value of this chi square distance where the expectation is computed under the distribution p r x and it turns out to be this expression. So, our final task is to compute uh, uh, this ex expectation. Now, the task of uh, computing the expectation uh, is taken care of by an important lemma, which we termed core lemma in our paper. Uh, in order to uh, discuss the lemma, uh, let us denote uh, f 2 to the n by g. So, cardinality of g is uh, denoted by capital N and let v r be a random r set in g. Then for each element u in g, we define this set of tuples, where u plus g 1 plus g 2, this belongs to the random uh, r set. And we also require that u g 1 g 2 be distinct. Now, this set uh, is, uh, is, is the same set that we discussed while discussing the conditional probability taken under uh, the distribution p r y. And uh, let us denote, uh, so its size is a random variable since v r is a random set, uh, random r set. So, the size of this set is a random variable which we denote by capital N u r. Now, uh, so the task of compu computing the expectation in the last slide boils down to computing this expectation. Now, the first step towards computing this expectation is to compute uh, the expectation of this random variable n u r that we accomplish using uh, indicator random variables. So, for, for the element u, we define this set to be the set of all tuples g 1, g 2 such that they are not equal and both belong to this set g minus u. And then we define this ra indicator random variable. Uh, uh, corresponding to each such tuple, uh, where its value is 1, if g 1, g 2 and u plus g 1 plus g 2, all these uh, 3 belong to the set v r and we also require that uh, uh, all of them are distinct. So, g 1 g and g 2 are already distinct and u is, u is also distinct from g 1 and g 2 and its value is 0 if, if this condition is not met then this random variable can be expressed as the sum of this uh, indicator random variables and uh, then we can exploit uh, the linearity of expectation to compute this expectation in a straightforward manner and it turns out to be uh, the expected uh, this expectation turns out to be exactly equal to d. Uh, uh, this is this d and uh, then uh, we have this, uh, um, then, then this expectation actually turns out to be variance of this random variable. So, ca computing this expectation is, uh, is to compute this variance. Now, the question is how do we compute this variance? So, to do that, uh, 
uh, for each tuple G1, G2, we define this set as G u, where G1, G2 and u plus G1 plus G2, I mean this triple consists of these elements G1, G2 and u plus G1 plus G2. Then we observe that uh, cardinality of union of two such sets corresponding to two tuples G and G dash, which uh, may not be distinct, can take uh, three distinct values 3, 5 and 6, uh, which we denote by W. Now we come to computation of this variance, so where we employ uh, the variance covariance formula. For the variance part, we employ this formula, since Ig is an indicator random variable, we employ this formula and get this expression. For the covariance part, we employ this formula and we split the sum according to the value of W. For W equal to 3, we get this expression when W takes value in uh, this set 5, 6, we get this expression and from these three expressions, we get the, we can compute the value of this variance. Uh, which is given by this expression and once this variance is computed, we can compute uh, the expectation of this chi-square distance uh, uh, between two distributions, which is given by this expression and this finally leads to the upper bound on the statistical distance between these two distributions. This is what we set out to do and this is the result that we get. To conclude, in this work we have shown strong PRF security of the construction XRP3. In the multi-user setting, our result implies that uh, XRP3 can be used simultaneously and independently by order of 2 to the n many users, while the adversary can make order of 2 to the n many queries per user. In the single user setting, uh, we have shown that the, that the adversary's advantage is limited to uh, is negligible uh, uh, precisely of the order 1 over 2 to the n over 2, even after making order of 2 to the n many queries. For the efficient version XRP-3, we have shown similar security guarantees. We have given the proof only for the single user case uh, and uh, the multi-user security analysis uh, can be carried out in the same manner as was done for uh, the construction XRP-3. Thank you for your attention. Finally, I acknowledge uh, the use of slide templates made available by Rafael Vieira Westenberger of IMPA Brazil, uh, which is available at the Overleaf website.